What is up, my cranky crew? It's in the for Craig Gameplays, and today we're back in more of Dream Daddy. So, in the last episode, at the very end, Amanda was like, hey, don't forget to go to my school, go to my uh, parent-teacher conference. So that's what we're doing right now. So, oh, and we got a little uh, hot and heavy with Robert in the last episode, but we don't like to talk about that. Oh, give it a little cigarette. I arrive at Amanda's school and check in at the front desk. They give me a bright orange visitor sticker and send me on my way. I feel pretty haggard after not brushing my teeth or showering, but hopefully nobody will notice. I check my watch and relieved to see that I'm only two minutes late. Wait, was it room 103 or 108? I spot a youth standing at his locker and approach him for help. Excuse me, do you know where Mr. Vega's classroom is? The youth, <laughs> ah, the youth turns around and looks me up and down with, a, with heavily lined eyes. <sighs> Come on, kid, I'm late for a meeting. Mr. Who? Mr. Vega. I don't know, have you tried the exit? Okay, wise guy, are you gonna help me or not? <sighs> Fine, up those stairs and to the left, can't miss him. I head up the stairs and walk around, unable to find Mr. Vega's class anywhere. After a couple minutes or search of searching, I head back downstairs. That punk youth sent me on a wild goose chase. I go back to where the low guard, <laughs> low wrench of roadway is standing, fully ready to give him a piece of my mind, when suddenly a de uh, head pops out of the classroom next to his locker. Mm -hmm. Lucian, don't you have a third period to get you? Ooh. Fine, Mr. Vega. Ah. Wow. Now I'm officially ten minutes late. I glare at him as he walks away. We're not cool. Hmm. You must be Carl. This period's almost over. Would you mind waiting in the back? Oh. Is that Mr. Vega? Mr. Vega leads me in and I take a seat in one of the uh, comically small student's desks in the back. I might get stuck in ah. this. Alright, where were we? Now, who can tell me all about the unreliability of narrator and J.D. Salinger's Catcher in the Rye. Um. Yes, Colin. Colin stands up and does the thing where he blows into the crook of his elbow to make a fart oh. noise. The whole class, class erupts oh. in laughter. All right, all right, everybody. Very funny, Colin. Please oh. sit down. Now, Holden Caulfield is an unreliable narrator in the sense that the bell for the end of the period rings. All the students immediately get up and make a break for the door. Oh. Remember to do the reading and answer the response questions on page 94 of your textbook. Nobody's listening. Mm -hmm. Or not, I guess. Mr. Vega turns to me and sighs. Oh. Middle schoolers, right? Don't you teach high schoolers? <sighs> Both, you know, budget cuts. <laughs> right. Oh. Thanks so much for coming in. No problem, Mr. Oh. Vega. Please, call me Hugo. Oh, know. we're on a first name basis. I don't normally do things impromptu parent-teacher meetings, but I'm sure you know as Amanda's a very bright student, and I'm concerned about her recent behavior. What's going on? Uh. Amanda's never been the most engaged student, but I know she cares. Recently, though, she's been falling behind. She's not completing assignments and has been doing rather poorly on tests. I normally chalk up, uh, chalk this up on senioritis, but... This is strange. I thought America's all- I thought America? I thought Amanda's always shared everything with me. It even crossed my mind that something might be wrong. Yeah. I just wanted to ask, is everything okay at home? We just moved, she's fine. She's had a tendency to bottle things up. We just moved. Well, we just moved recently, but it wasn't- But it was only to the other side of town, and Amanda was more excited about it than I was. Oh. See if you could talk to her about it. I know she values you a great deal and would appreciate your guidance. If she keeps heading down this road, I know how important art school is to her, and I would hate to see her miss out on scholarship money that she clearly deserves. I make, I'll make i make sure to talk to Amanda. Thanks for letting me know, hey. Hugo. Anytime! On my way out, I stop. Thinking for a moment, I turn to Hugo. Hey, Hugo. Hmm? Yes? They ever cratch that rye? Hmm. Ah, good old dad joke! Ah, ah, ah. Yes. Ooh, he liked it! Ah, uh, what a catch I am. I leave the classroom and make my way out of the school. I'm still a little bit in shock that Amanda was able to hide so well from me. She always has been a force of positivity in my life, especially after we lost her father. Amanda must be done with classes uh, for the day by now. I'm sure she would appreciate a ride home, and maybe I can talk to her about what's going on. Uh. Ah. I pull up to the carpool and Amanda hops in the passenger yeah. seat. So, did you have fun about, uh, gossiping about me? Mr. Vega and I actually gossip about our celebrity crushes. So you talked about Mario Batali the whole time? It was a very productive oh. meeting. I'm pretty hungry. Can we grab some dinner? Sure thing. We can make something at home. Let's go to the mall food court. Uh, we can make something at home. 
cool. I think with our powers combined, we can throw together a gourmet meal with the food uh, uh, worthy of the food channel. I don't know about that, but I can promise I will at least it will at least be edible. That's the spirit. We drive in silence for a short while. Amanda plays a game on her phone. I should say something. You know, sometimes when a kid gets older, they find that they have to keep things hidden from their parents. And that's okay, because sometimes that's what kids do. And that's okay, but also sometimes it's good to have parents' perspective, because, you know, uh, maybe the parents also have dealt with similar situations. And maybe they can, they're a little bit cooler than you can give them credit for. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is, uh, it's good to share. Love you. <laughs> have you been reading my tweets? You have Twitter? Huh? What? Never mind. Look, sweetie, Mr. Vega said that you haven't been participating in class and that you're not turning huh? things in. Oh, I'm fine, Pop. Senioritis and all that. I thought you liked Mr. Vega's class. It's fine. He's fine. We pull up to a stoplight. Ah, Amanda. Still, she's text. She's still texting. Just, I want you to know that you can talk to me about anything. Uh-huh. I tell that whatever it is, she doesn't want me to know anything about it. That's frustrating. Uh, I heard MRR's going to that fancy school in California. That's exciting. Yep. Are you bummed that you guys aren't going to be going to the same school? Yep. Mm. Amanda keeps texting. She stifles a laugh. What's so funny? Uh, it's a... Uh, I don't think you'd get it. Is it a meme? Okay. Who are you texting? Oh. Noah. Who's Noah? My friend. Does he go to your high school? Oh. Yep. Do you like Noah? Oh. What? Uh, no. Dad. Ugh. I can't believe you would. Ugh. Dad. I mean, jeez. Why would you... Ugh. Gross. Sorry, sorry. I, I just asking. Dad, he's just my friend. Guys and girls can be friends. He's my friend. Mm. Okay, okay. Jeez. This is going well. Well, good talk. Love you, kiddo. <laughs> she leans forward and turns up the radio. I guess that conversation is over. Always carry a pocket knife. Ah, good dad tip. Amanda and I get back home and start cooking some dinner. I love the kitchen. It's so nice. I found this arsenal, uh, this artisanal mac and cheese, arsenal, <laughs> arsenal mac and cheese recipe online that I've been trying to try. Artisanal? That's two ingredients to mac and cheese. There's two ingredients to mac and cheese. Mac and then cheese. Dad, please try and enjoy the finer things in life. I think you of all people should be able to appreciate that one can do with, uh, what one can do with cheese. Plus it has bacon in it. Aren't we, as a society, collectively over bacon? Oh. It can never stop being good. It has a PR, it just has a PR oh. problem. <laughs> That's awesome. We get to work on the recipe. Amanda measuring things out and handing them uh, to me to dump in the bowl so I can feel useful. We both worked up quite an appetite since the gross small food ravaged our, dis uh, our digestive tracts. Amanda puts me on bacon duty, so I chop a bunch of, uh, I chop a bunch and toss it into a pan and get, and get sizzling. <laughs> The key to good mac and cheese is a balance of texture and flavor, Pops. Not only are we going to want the fullness of cheese and bacon, but we also need to counterbalance it with a crunchy mouthfeel of breadcrumbs. Check on bacon, mouthfeel. Let's check on the bacon. Make sure it's, uh, make sure it's not burnt. Still pink and rubbery. I give the pieces a stir. Wait, what's the mouthfeel? You know, when you eat stuff and it, the texture. Uh, listen, I've been watching a lot of Food Channel and I honestly don't know what it means. It just makes me feel sophisticated to say. No, 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 I get that. Every time I watch the channel, I just feel in order, hungry, jealous, insecure about my cooking ability, and then hungry again. I like the mouthfeel of that sentence. Oh my god. Amanda, my- um, Amanda, mouthfeel isn't about food. It's also about words that are fun to say. Gregarious. Ooh. Boisterous. I love the word boisterous. Cattywampus. Check. Check on the bacon real quick. Bacon is sizzling. It smells good, too. I give that sucker a flip. Nice. Good work, Dad. Bacon can easily overheat and cause a grease fire. I'm proud of you for <laughs> remaining vigilant. We literally just moved in here, and I'm dead set on not burning this place down. Eyes like a hawk. Amanda finishes up the mac and cheese, and I toss the bacon bits in there. Starting, uh, after stirring it all together, I, I take a taste. Mm. How's the mouth feel? Scrumptious, fantastical, taste-tacular. Not an actual word, but I'll allow it. She tries a spoon spoonful. Taste-tacular. Hell yeah. We settle in on the couch with our bowls of mac and cheese. Oh cool. Long Haul Ice Road Paranormal Ghost Truckers is on. Your favorite, right? Oh hell yes. They have to make it over the Canadian tundra before the ice melts, but they're also hunting ghosts. Also, the truck is haunted. 
there's an episode I've already seen. This is an episode I've already seen, but it's one of the best. Callum and Flint Dogbone, the twin brother truck driving and ghost hunting duo, find themselves in the greatest peril yet. Oh no, the ghost done got control. Oh wait, oh no, the ghost got done got, done got control of the truck. I can't steer them on the ice roads. Let me use this EVP meter to try and communicate with the spirits. Flint, we're about to die. Ah, uh, almost got it. If you listen carefully, it sounds like it's saying you're going to die. That's because we're gonna die, you! This is art. The episode ends and Amanda uh, uh, excuses herself to go start arguments on the internet. I stay up a little longer, curious about the exploits of Callum and Flint Dogbone after their disastrous ice road incident accident. Afterward, I crawl into bed and get started and get a good night's sleep. Ah, uh, good night's sleep. We all need one of those. When changing a tire, make sure to tighten the bolts in a starfish pattern. Oh, very, very, very good. That is a good tip. Z, 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 top. Morning, sleepyhead. Five more minutes. You have never, ever let me have five more minutes, so get up. Fine. Uh, it was so great the other day on Twitter. It was the first thing that I saw when I opened up Twitter in the morning. I just like roll out of bed and I was like, oh, let's see what the internet is up to, as you do. And the first thing was from the Dream Daddy Twitter. It was like, hey kiddo, you awake? Or something like that, I can't remember. But it was so nice, ah! We have cereal for breakfast and spend the morning putting together furniture. Amanda is much better at, at, inter at interpreting the tiny ma manuals. We're able to put together a few shelves and one desk. I'm pretty sure it was supposed to be a bookcase. So, you excited for the cookout today? Excited to beef up my grilling skills? There's food, I'm excited. Yeah, relatable. I'm all over those terrible store-bought sugar cookies that everyone brings to parties. Mm. Yeah, those are bad. Which means they're more for mm. me. Don't you want to meet some of the other people in the neighborhood? I'll probably end up standing uncomfortably in the corner with a plate of food and hope that nobody mm. talks to me. Dad, you're a beautiful work in progress. We'll get that butterfly to emerge from the cocoon. Oh. The social butterfly. Well, we better get started and ready. Uh, we better start getting ready. We definitely don't want to be late. What? No, we have to be fashionably be late. Who shows up to a cookout on time? You know what? We're going early. Just because you said that. I head out to the door and Amanda re reluctantly follows. We- we- we walk across the street to Joseph's house with a store-bought veggie plate. I'm a terrible cook if it doesn't involve a grill. Mm. Classic dad. I guess we're not as early as we thought we were. Joseph's backyard is already packed with people, and the smell of hot dogs wafts through the air. Small children run through a sprinkler, and adults chat in small clusters. I set our veggie plate down on a table next to the other veggie plates. Huh. Hey, there's Joseph. I wave to get his attention. The moment he sees us, he jogs over, arms open wide. Welcome, I'm so glad you two are here. And you brought veggies. Oh. <laughs> Let me introduce you to my family. Kids, come over here. This is Chris, my oh. eldest. Hi. Oh. This is Christian and Christy. They're twins. Ah. Hello. They stare creepily and say nothing. They do look very creepy, yeah. And then, of course, there's our youngest, Krish. Wait, where is Krish? Maybe Mary put him in his crib. Oh no, it's the woman from the bar the other night. What is she doing oh. here? Oh, and how could I forget my lovely wife, Mary? Mm. Joseph pecks her on the cheek. She smiles. Ah, Mary, sweetheart. Did you put Chris to bed? Mm. I have to go look for him. You don't know where he is? What? You have to... <laughs> Joseph keeps, takes a moment and regains his composure. Oh. Mary, this is our new neighbor, Carl, and his daughter, Amanda. Yeah. I'd shake your hand, but I'd ha <laughs> but I have a glass of wine that I need to tend to. Okay, I, <laughs> I love her. <laughs> uh, nice to meet you, Mary, for the first time. Charmed. Well, I'll have to go there now. Why do you have to be like that? You met her at a bar, dude. It's totally normal. Mary Lee. Oh, well, she was kind of hitting on us. Oh, God, this is so awkward. I wonder if Joseph knows. I wonder if Mary knows that Joseph knows. I wonder if Joseph knows that Mary knows that I know. It takes all my energy to not run away from the barbecue to, uh, and start fresh in a new city. <laughs> my wife has a wonderful sense of humor. Please, you two, enjoy the barbecue. All the guys are really excited to meet you. Let me introduce you to Damien. Joseph beckons to a tall man in gothic attire uh, over to the conversation. Ooh, good eve, friends. Oh. Damien, this is our new neighbor, Carl. Ah, uh, so lovely to meet you. Damien shakes my hand and then bows. If you're ever interested, it would bring me great pleasure to host you for a spot of afternoon tea. Wow, uh, yeah, that sounds rad. Oh. Splendid. Well, I must be off. Perhaps our paths shall cross again. Damn, what a classy dude. 
Amanda and I mill around and try to find some food to spread out on the table. I pick at some deviled eggs, and Amanda grabs a small paper plate and immediately be begins to uh, begins piling it with baked goods. Uh, I don't, uh, I don't want to have to make friends. Come on, Dad. Who are you gonna party with when I go off to school? But I don't want to have to do pleasantries, Dad. Uh, they're gonna talk about the weather. Oh, do it. Make a friend. How could I possibly abandon my only child at a social function? That's bad parenting. This plate of cookies is my new dad. Bye. Mar Amanda shoves me into the center of the yard. Well, here goes nothing. I walk around the party and I'm surprised to see some familiar faces. Isn't that the barista from the coffee spoon? Hey, what's up, dude? Oh, dang, Robert's here? Didn't that guy throw a frisbee at my head? The mysterious gothic guy. Isn't that Amanda's teacher? I, hey, I know Craig. But wait a second, all these people live in the cul-de-sac? That can't be right. I'd better investigate. Ooh, talk to Robert and Brian. Talk to Matt, Hugo, and Craig. Talk to Joseph and Damien. Burger time. Let's talk to Matt, Hugo, and Craig. Why not? <laughs> Matt and Hugo seem embroiled in, uh, embroiled in an intense discussion. Craig looks on, smiling politely. I walk over to say hello. Well, I don't think it's fair to try and compare two art movements like that. Uh, periods in art only exist because they're a unique byproduct of the social and political climate of the time and place and try to take something like, say, the Rococo period and compare it to the most modernism, uh, to postmodernism in America. You're completely disregarding the context in which work of art is created. Matt and Hugo seem, uh, seem to be so busy talking that they don't notice me. Craig leans in. Dude, I have no idea what's happening. Talk to Craig, listen to Matt and Hugh. Talk to Craig. I turn my attention to Craig, who seems a little bit more, uh, uh, seems a little more attentive to my existence. How'd resistance training go the other day? Great, Little River here is a great cheerleader. Aren't you, Tiny Bro? Craig <laughs> grabs River's arms and waves them around. I love that baby, so cute. You can do it, Dad, I'm so proud. Oh wait, you can do it, Dad, I'm so proud of you. I'm so sorry for pooping on you. Must be a handful at that age. Oh, they always are. But it's so worth it. Craig grabs River's arms again and waves them around. Also, I'm sorry for throwing up on you, Dad. How's a little, how's, how you settling in? Almost done, the new place is perfect. Uh, almost done. Still a few odds and ends to take care of before I can really call myself settled, but I think we can upgrade the situation to livable. We did livable through the entirety of college. Yeah, my goal was for Amanda to live the sort of life that didn't involve eating spoonfuls of ranch dressing as a palate cleanser between different types of pizza. She still does, though. Hey, she takes after her dad. Carl, how you like in the neighborhood? It's pretty nice. Everybody's been super friendly. Seems like your daughter's fitting in just fine. Matt points across the yard to where Amanda, Daisy, and another young girl are playing. They're all sitting cross-legged in the grass, picking weeds and weaving them into tiny, tiny flower crowns. It's pretty adorable. The girl I don't recognize jogs over to us. What is it, sweetheart? Ah, oh, she's adorable! It's a flower crown. I thought you'd look cute in it. Ah, hey. oh, well, there's only one way to find out. Matt takes the flower crown and places it hey. atop his head. Am I cool now? Oh, I want to see the flower crown. The girl stares at him, thinking it over. Mm, no, but you're slightly less uncool than you were before to put it on. Hey. Before you put it on. Oh, there you go. How tumbler of you. <sighs> hey, Carl, this is my daughter. Hello. I'm Carmi Carmencita. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Amanda comes over with Daisy in tow. Aw, oh, look at all the gals. Dad, look, I'm making friends. Are you making friends? You better be making friends. Yeah, actually, Amanda. You remember the cool barista from the coffee shop? And my cool old, and my old college friend, and uh, your what? teacher? Oh, m hi, Mr. Vega. I didn't realize we were neighbors. Yes. <laughs> yes! Yep. You still gonna get me that overdue term Aww. paper? <laughs> uh, great seeing you. Amanda finger guns her way out of the conversation like a champ. She learned the finger guns from me. I'm very oh. proud. She's definitely a charmer. Speaking of which, where did my son what? go? Hugo looks around uh, around the party. He must finally spot him because his eyes go what? wide. Ernest, Ernest Hemingway Vega, are you smoking? Uh. Ernest is holding a lit cigarette. Nope. I see Ernest across the way. He casually takes a long drag of his cigarette and then flicks it into mm. a gutter. Unbelievable, excuse me. Hugo marches over to Ernest and I turn my attention to Matt and Craig. Kids, right? Oh. Man, I do not envy Hugo. The last barbecue we had, Ernest tried to shove a sparkler down Joseph's pants. Nearly burned down half the yard. In the barbecue we had before that, he actually burned down half the yard. 
And then it spread to onto my lawn and burned down half of my yard, too. Oh, no. Hugo walks back over to us, practically dragging Ernest behind. Um. Hey, everybody. Sorry about that. Carl, this is my son, Ernest. Hello. Ernest looks away, sulking, his hands shoved deep in his pockets. <laughs> Hugo nudges him impatiently. Hey. Nice to meet you, Ernest. What grade are you in? Does it matter? Oh. Ernest. Okay, I'm in eighth grade. God, are you happy now? I'm sure you're just dying to know. Uh, yeah, good for oh. you. Can I go now? I'm tired of making old, uh, I'm tired of talking to old dudes who blame my generation for the failing economy. Ouch. Uh. Ernest. Oh yeah, because I'm totally embarrassing you. Ernest puts his earbuds and storms off to stand on the corner. Well, that was certainly something. He seems nice. Hugo puts his head in his hands and oh. sighs. I'm so sorry. He's having a really rough time. As much as I want to be the cool dad, I have to be the author authoritarian dad. Uh, and he clearly resents me for it. I mean, uh, I think as a dad and teacher, that's about as, author uh, uh, as authoritarian as you can get. Hmm. Honestly, none of us are- are any of us cool dads? Is it even possible to be a cool dad? I don't know, you guys all seem pretty cool. What? I'm cool as a cool- yeah, yeah. cool as a cucumber. See? That right there. You can't say that. I don't know. My kids think I'm cool. But for how long, Craig? How long are, are, do we get to be the cool dads? Uh -huh. I, uh, I don't know. Hey. I think we just have to accept the fact that as dads, we've become the machine we once raged against and accept our fate to unironically wear socks and sandals. Your kids may think you're cool now, but the moment they hit puberty, you're doomed. And Amanda's 18, and she thinks uh -huh. I'm cool. I yell across the, dart, uh, uh, the yard to my daughter, Amanda, I'm cool, right? Amanda just laughs. She keeps laughing. I see your point. Um. As much as we all want it, I don't think it's important to be cool dads as it is to be a good dad. That's so nice. We can't all be friends with our kids. It just doesn't work. I mean, look at me and Ernest. Oh. Our job as parents is to make sure our kids turn out okay. Yeah, you're right. It'd be nice to have it both ways. Hearing those guys talk, uh, hearing these guys talk about this makes me think of my relationship with Amanda. We get along so well. We might become, there, but there might come a time when it won't be like that. It's college when it happens. My dad and I get along really well. I think my dad's fucking awesome. I love my dad. And my mom too, obviously. I get along really well with both my parents. I think my dad's a pretty cool hey. dad though. Don't let us eat up your time, Carl. Go meet some of the other people around the neighborhood. Okay. Uh, let's talk to Robert and Brian, sure. I walk over to Robert and Brian, who are chatting over drinks, determined not to be weird, uh, to be weird about what happened that night. I hope Robert feels the same. Hey, guys. <laughs> Carl, how the heck are you? That's not the voice that I gave him. Settling into the neighborhood, all right? Oh, you betcha. Got the living room in order, uh, in order <laughs> at least. That's great to hear. I've been doing the same li I've been doing this some living room work as well. Finally got the 50 inch in there. The game looks great and high def. Oh boy. Carl, have you met Robert yet? Yes, I believe we met briefly. <clears throat> hey. Robert takes a long sip of whiskey. Oh. Robert robotically extend a hand. I I shake it as he stares unblinkingly into my eyes. Oh God, what does it mean? <laughs> How's it going? Mm -hmm. It's good. Robert focuses on the whiskey he's holding. He takes a long sip. We gotta play stealthily, guys. Great, look at my friends becoming friends. Us dads gotta stick together, you know? Us dads? Robert has a kid? Oh, I didn't know you had kids. Oh. Robert continues to stare at me. Jesus, does this guy ever blink? Yep. Cool, that's cool. Oh. We stand in incredibly uncomfortable silence for several moments until we gotta get this dad off We gotta get off his we gotta get off this haunted truck. Oh, no the ghost locks it locked the doors Amanda and Daisy run up to us. Thank hey. God quick hit the emergency escape button the trucks don't have emergency escape buttons uh -huh. uh, Then hit the brakes I guess and then we'll get out of the truck the imaginary truck yeah. anyway, we're safe from the ghosts but how will we ever survive this arctic tundra? Daisy, you might have to eat me. Are you prepared to do that? I'm prepared to do anything to survive. The cold, that's cold-blooded. I like that. Although I'm not sure I had the materials required, required to properly cook you. <laughs> Wait a second, are you guys playing Long Haul Ice Road Paranormal Ghost Truckers? Yeah! Amanda and I love that show. <laughs> it's the best, especially the episode where Callum hides in Flint's keys and Flint <laughs> retaliates by breaking in uh, by breaking an ancient curse urn and sending the ghost spirit after him. Yeah, I uh, hate quality. Uh, it's such quality television. Yeah. All right, Daisy. I found us a couple of bugs. We're gonna 
make a great meal. Lots of protein. Gonna keep us from starving out here in this harsh, icy wasteland. But there's a whole table of food right over there. Daisy, it's a game. We're playing pretend. It's what kids do. Live a little. Amanda gives Daisy a handful of gummy worms uh, from the snack table. They eat them with mock disgust. Let's go find, uh, let's go find kindling for a fire. Okay, but not an actual fire because we're playing pretend. No, you're getting, now you're getting it. Ah, Daisy and Amanda run off. What a cute couple of kids. Turn my attention back to the conversation, but wait, where did Robert go? I skim the party and finally find him over in the corner talking to Mary. Does he not want to talk? Uh -huh. Man, I've never seen her get along with anybody so quickly. I snap out of my my Robert-induced haze. I guess Amanda just sort of has a way with kids. Oh. That's kind of amazing. Lazy doesn't really get along with kids her age. Hmm. It's nice that he's not trying to get uh, trying to one-up me this time. Maybe we can have a regular friendship after all. Really? Oh. She just kind of keeps to herself. Her teachers say she spends every recess in the library. Uh, I accidentally clicked. There it is. I wouldn't uh, worry about it too much. Amanda has uh, was shy at Daisy's age too. She used to have a uh, have a habit of crawling under tables and crying every time we took her to a restaurant. She bit people too. <laughs> ho ho, kids, right? <laughs> Gotta love them. You're a cry too by law. Hey. Well, since they're getting along so well, maybe we should try to put together a little play date for them. Yeah, that'd be nice. Hey. Well, I don't want to take up too much of your time. Go meet some of the other fellas. All right. Uh, talk to Joseph and Damien. I spot Joseph ta chatting with Damien by the grill. I wonder what they're talking about. I walk over to him. So, I'm curious. You walk me through why you had your house painted black? Where do I even start? The house says- Oh wait, what was the voice? The house stays warmer in the winter. It provides an artistic contrast to the rest of the neighborhood and it complements the crimson interior perfectly. It's definitely an interesting oh. choice. Thank you, I'm very proud of my abode. Carl, I was just having a conversation with Damien here about his aesthetic design decisions. Ah, greetings once again, Carl. Do tell me about yourself. Are you new to the area? Yes, my daughter and I just moved in the other day. You enjoying the party so far? Oh, definitely. Thanks so much for putting this on. It's nice to be in a cul-de-sac where everyone is so friendly and welcoming. Amanda walks up to the conversation. Hi, it's Damien, right? My name's Amanda. At your service. What a pleasure to meet you. Damien finishes the sentence with a flourish and a bow, producing a single rose, offering it to Amanda. Amanda blushes and returns the, the gesture with a curtsy. You know how to treat a lady. Ah. Hello, Amanda. Ooh. Seemingly out of nowhere, Joseph's twins appear. They're cursed. They're gonna murder us. Uh, are they ah. speaking in unison? <laughs> hey, won't you come play with us? Hmm. Uh, come play with us forever. <laughs> Guys, enough with the creepy twin shtick. We've talked hmm. about this. Christian and Christy slowly back away. I would totally do that if I was a twin. Do you think, where do you think you, they got that from? <sighs> Mary pops into the conversation, wine in hand. Ooh, uh, As always, uh, I don't know. Mary takes a long sip of wine. I think I might have taped over a VeggieTales VHS with The Shining, who knows. She takes another sip of her wine. Where's Krish? Uh, Wasn't he with you? You had him a moment ago. <gasps> He's probably stuffing dirt in his mouth. He'll be alright. Toddlers are pretty resilient. Mary tips her glass to me. Mm. In my first time on to the rodeo, it's my fifth. I, I have a squeeze- I have squeezed four Ooh. little- Sweetheart, would you do me a favor and please find Chris? That would be a great- oh I'm sure he's fine. Yeah. Mary. Huh? Okay, jeez. Mary finishes her wine and wanders off. Dad, can we go now? Oh, I see. Ah, huh. uh, Lucian, have I introduced you to Carl yet? Hey, it's that punk from Amanda's school. I remember you. Whatever. Huh. That's no way for a young man to speak to his elders. Be polite. Lucian bows. Whatever, sir. Lucian bows again. Mr. Christensen, may I have a veggie burger, sir? Oh. Coming right up, bud. Are you a vegetarian? Yup. Uh -huh. Make that two veggie burgers. Did you know that some people in the Victorian area were vegetarians? They describe carnivorous type people as blood lappers. You look kind of like a, va uh, a vampire, though, so I mean... Dad. Hey. That's really interesting, Damien. Joseph turns at the grill. Just a hint of tattoo peeks from underneath his sleeve. Ooh, I didn't notice before. It's the bottom of an anchor. Ooh. Whoa, is that a tattoo? Whoa. Yup, I wasn't always the youth pastor, you know. That's cool. Wanna see mine? What? What? Lucian pulls back some rubber bracelets, revealing a lopsided 666 in black ink. 
My buddy gave me a stick and poke tattoo last week. I think it's healing up pretty good. Lucian. We'll talk about this later. That's pretty cool. What's the, what's the significance of the tattoo? I don't know. I just thought it looked sick. Well, in my my opinion, the only reason you get a tattoo is because you want one. Careful, though. That number carries weight. Man, Joseph is a way cooler youth pastor than I thought. I figured youth pastors popped out of the womb with a Bible. I wonder what he did uh, before preaching. Oh. Without further ado, let's work some magic. Joseph c closes his eyes, takes a deep breath, and gets to work with the greatest of ease. Uh, gets to work. With the greatest of ease, he sets the patties on the grill, flourishing as he flops- as he flips his spatula in the air. It's easily some of the best grill work I've ever seen. You guys this, think this is my first time in front of a grill? He's working faster now, effortlessly tossing cheese patties and perfectly grilling onions on the side. One after another, this- uh, the dads take notice and crowd around Joseph to admire his masterful technique. Oh. You probably didn't know this, Carl, but Joseph's been around here for his- uh, Joseph's known around here for his grillmanship. Hey. He's ungrillable. Nice. I tried to get on his level, but I just can't catch oh. up. Ah, dad puns. Let us keep studying. He has a rare quality about him. <laughs> Mustard, we keep talking about this? Can't we just appreciate the artist? <laughs> so many dad puns. I never make, I've never seen him make a mistake. Mm. I love all the dads coming together for the dad puns. Okay, we need to stop. This is getting too cheesy. <laughs> Please stop! <laughs> All the children at the party blew in the glorious display of puns in unison. Wink. All right, got a wink. The food's ready. Please form an orderly barbecue. Ha! Amanda groans. We all grab our food and hang out, enjoying perfectly cooked cheeseburgers. Yeah. Man, it's wild how all of us dads live in the same cul-de-sac. Yeah, yeah. Kind of nice, isn't it? Feels like there's a real community here. Totally helps when you've just when you're just a single dad trying to raise a kid, aren't we all? Oh. We're happy to have you here, man. I'm n I think you're gonna like this neighborhood a lot. Oh. Uh, plus Amanda seems to be getting along with all the other kids. If she decides to get into the babysitting game, she'll really make oh. me- She'll really make a killing. Hey, why don't you all add us on dad book? Dad book? <laughs> yeah, it's a great social network for dads to keep in touch with each other. We're all on it, so if you ever need to reach anyone, that's the simplest oh. way to do it. Sorry, I'm just an old-fashioned dad. Social media goes over my head sometimes. Oh. Don't worry, pops. I'll help you figure it out. The rest of the barbecue goes smoothly. We all trade stories and drink beer as our kids play on the lawn. Amanda breaks up a fight between Carmencita and the weird twins. I think they wanted her soul. What a fun barbecue that was! Amanda and I walk back to our place as the sun sets over the neighborhood. Pretty fun party, don't you think? I mean, I got a burger in me. Felt like it was a networking event. Wish I could have. Uh, wish I could have been playing paranormal ice road truckers. Yeah, Daisy seemed like you were having way better time than I was. Yeah. We had a good time. That's because we were. Well, at least you met some other cool dads. You should hit them up on Dad Book. Maybe I will, if I ever find out how social media works. I have a good feeling about this place. Me too, Dad. Aw, isn't that nice? Huh. Amanda and I arrive home with the remnants of our veggie plate. Hmm. Seems like nobody was into the cauliflower. Any big plans for this evening? Actually, yeah, I'm going out with some friends. Oh, hmm. is that okay? Yeah, of course, just keep me posted and be home before hmm. midnight. You got it, just, and be careful. I will. Make good choices, oh. of course, and call me if you need anything. Oh. Dad, you're not gonna get me, you're not gonna do the thing where you wait silently for me to come home in the living room with all the lights off, are you? What, no, I've never done that and we'll never do that. Hmm. Okay, do you have plans tonight? I, uh, my plans were kind of to eat ice cream and watch TV with Amanda, but I'll find something to do. I'm gonna work on some stuff, see how long I can sleep for. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> Kiddo, I'm tapped uh -huh. out. But the sun hasn't even gone down yet. I still have sleep to catch up on from when you were a baby. Just let me be. I'm just relaxing tonight. Have fun, okay? Ah. Uh. Great. See you later. I watch Amanda drive off into the night. I really do hope she has fun. I plop down in front of the TV and turn on some wine and dine mastermind with celebrity chef Gavin Chapman. Looks like Gavin's been uh, making a, ro a roasted rack of lamb with rosemary mashed potatoes. I'd love to be able to cook like that. Although, if I was actually good at cooking, I'd use my powers for evil. Just like making base baked Alaskas all day instead of any food for real of real nutritional substance. Man, Gavin Chapman just caught that thing on fire, but he meant to do it. What a professional. I lose track of time, and I blaze through several episodes of Wine and Dine, Mastermind, and also an episode of some cooking show called Meat Hell. I'm not even sure what it was about. 
It was just a lot of yelling. I glance up my watch. Man, it's almost midnight. I should check in with Amanda. I send a text. Hey, kiddo, you good? Ooh. I wander in the ki into the kitchen uh, as I wait for a, a reply. Amanda's phone is almost always in her hand. I'm sure she'll respond soon. Unless she's driving home now, which in, cap in case I hope she doesn't respond soon because I definitely taught her better than to text and drive. All right. I'm going to end this one here. I love this game so much. Let me know uh, because I'm assuming we'll have to like pick which dad route to choose. I've heard that there's like all the different storylines or whatever. So let me know what you would like to see. I love, I love this game so much though. It's so awesome. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to slap that like button right in the face. And I will see you guys in the next video. Love you all. Stay cranky. Bye. What is the